Hi everyone! When we're in the cinema or at home watching movies, we usually have to go through the opening with the logo of the film studio first. These logos have a very interesting story behind them, but almost no one has ever thought about how they were made. For example, do you know what mountain the Paramount logo is depicting? How many stars surround it? Why are they there? Or what's with the Walt Disney Castle? Why is the boy fishing on the DreamWorks logo? Are you intrigued already? Then get yourself comfortable while we show you the history of the most famous studio logos. Let's get it on. DreamWorks One day back in 1994, three brilliant people got together. Director Steven Spielberg, Disney director Jeffrey Katzenberg, and music producer David Geffen. They decided to create a new film studio that's now known as DreamWorks. We associate the company's name with the fishing boy of the logo. Yeah, the one sitting on the moon. But the original idea was actually slightly different. They were originally looking for a computer-generated image of a man fishing from the moon. But visual effects artist Dennis Muren, who was then working along with Spielberg, insisted on making the logo by hand. And so they asked illustrator Robert Hunt to draw it. Hunt was called in to execute the final image on which the motion version was based. It took Hunt three months to complete the final motion logo with the boy fishing from the moon. Spielberg loved this version and decided to use it for his new company. By the way, the moon boy is William Hunt, the son of the illustrator. Paramount Pictures the Paramount Pictures Company was created in 1912 by Adolf Zucker, a film investor, and the Froman Brothers, theater magnates at the time. Originally, the studio went by another name, Famous Players Film Company. The famous Paramount Pictures logo shows a majestic mountain peak covered in snow and surrounded by a ring of stars. It was created by the illustrator William Hodkinson, who based his work on the Ben Lomond Mountain in Utah, where he spent his childhood. The original logo had 24 stars, one for every movie star that back then had a contract with the studio. However, nowadays there are only 22, and no one knows why. Eventually, the logo changed a bit. Now, as a result of technological development, instead of the original mountain picture, we see a computer-generated image. Columbia Pictures This famous logo depicting a woman holding a torch, a symbol of America, was created in 1924 and showed a lady draped in a US flag and holding a torch. There were no clouds in the background and the forehead of the woman was covered with a headdress. It looked very primitive and the whole picture looked more like a sketch. Six years later, the logo was improved. The lady became more elegant. She coiffed her hair and lost the headdress, and the flag was now barely seen. The font was now different, the letters got bigger, and the writing was now behind the girl. But the most important thing was that the empty background was now filled with clouds, and the torch was no longer flickering and blinking, but glowing smoothly instead. In the next few years, the logo was slightly changed, and the word pictures was added. But the now classic look of the logo was created in 1993, after Columbia Pictures was bought by Sony. The logo was repainted digitally by New Orleans artist Michael Diaz. Michael Diaz hired Jenny Joseph as a model for the logo. Diaz decided that the flame shouldn't be so bright and that the logo should mainly focus on the girl. Therefore, she was redrawn more elegant and tender than ever before. Finally, in 1996, the animation was changed. First, you could see the torch and then the rest of the picture. Also, during the opening, you can hear a tune written by Jonathan Elias. Metro Goldwyn-Mayer In 1924, American lyricist Howard Dietz created a logo for the Goldwyn Pictures depicting Leo the Lion roaring. That's how the lion story started. Over the years, at least seven lions interpreted Leo. The first lion was Slats, but the logo was noiseless, so Slats was there only for decoration. The next one, Jackie, was the first one to roar, although back then the films were silent. The roar was recorded with the special equipment, and in each cinema there was a phonograph placed behind the screen to reproduce the sound during the opening. Then there were two others, Telly and Coffee, but we don't know much about them. Then there was Tanner, famous for its perfect mane. And finally, in 1957, the studio shot the logo featuring its most famous lion, the one we all know from our childhood. He is called Leo, and he's the one we still see on the logo. By the way, no lions were harmed on the set, so don't believe any stupid rumors. If someone shows you a picture to prove you otherwise, just know that it is fake. The Walt Disney Company Just like Warner Brothers, Columbia Pictures, and many other companies, the Walt Disney Company was founded by two brothers, Walt and Roy Disney. This was back in 1932. 
It was first a small motion picture studio, but it grew little by little and eventually became one of the biggest Hollywood studios ever. Nowadays, it has 11 theme parks, two water parks, and a couple of broadcast networks. The Disney logo is worldwide famous, but not many know what the castle depicts. The castle is actually called Neuschwanstein or New Swanstone Castle, and it is a 19th century Romanesque revival palace in southwest Bavaria in Germany. It was the prototype for the logo. Besides, it was the prototype for the Sleeping Beauty themed castle in the Disneyland Park in Paris. But the logo looked like this until 2006. It was then replaced by a totally new 3D computer-generated logo created by the Weta Digital Studio, based on another Disneyland fortress, the Cinderella Castle, which used Chateau Doucet as a prototype. The new logo was first shown on the premiere of the movie Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.